for the sixth time in this series, the Montana State Bobcats are playing in the MPC Computers Bowl. I don't know how, pretty much every year they seem to send us here. I mean, this is season 12 and half of the years have ended with us in this stadium playing on the Smurf turf. But I mean, it's a bowl game, I guess, so I'll take it. Our opponents this season are going to be the Kent State Golden Flashes. They are the underdogs in this game. We're definitely the favorites as uh, they only have six wins on the season coming into this game with a six and five record. But obviously, they're still a solid team. They made it all the way to a bowl game. They have a winning record, and so we can't be sleeping on them. They look to be a pretty solid team. Their quarterback has more touchdowns, less interceptions, and a much higher completion percentage than Kevin Fuller. So I would say they got the better guy there. Montana State after their win in, against the Grizzlies in the brawl, brawl of the Wild last week. That moves us all the way up to number 27. And so I, I wasn't really expecting a win over a two-win team like that to propel us that high. But hey, I'll take it. The Golden Flashes will start off today's game with the football, picking up a gain of six on the first play. Pass over the middle is going to be caught by Sean Young. That's going to move the chains. Toss play to the right here for Coles. He's looking to go deep with it, and it's going to be broken up by Brett Garrett. Nice job there. Handoff going to go to Coles. He's going to take this one himself to the right side, and that's going to pick up about five, make it six. Now on third, down throw on the move is going to be broken up by Cole Hurd, and Kent Stakes going to have to punt. Fuller's got all day in the pocket to throw. He made his return last week after an injury knocked him out for about three to four games, and he came back just in the nick of time for the Brawl of the Wild. Faced with an early third down, and it just got a little bit easier with that false start, or actually the encroachment penalty. So now it's going to be third and five. Fuller under some pressure. Nobody open. He's going to try to run it, but the Kent State defense is all over that, and Montana State goes three and out. Pass is going to be caught in the flat there, and it's going to be just shy of the sticks. Third and one, handoff goes to Coles, and he gets denied in the backfield by Robert Alexander, walloping him with a big hit, and he paid the price there. Kent State punting the football away. Brad Boyd's going to get it from his own 25-yard line. Boyd taking this one to the right side, down the right sideline, and looks like nobody's going to catch him. This is going to be a punt return touchdown. Montana State is on the board. So after that 73-yard punt return, the Golden Flashes are back on offense. Caught by Thomas Bennett, he takes that one upfield and picks up a pretty solid gain. Luckily, it's nothing too serious for Robert Alexander, and he will return to the game shortly. Now a draw right up the gut for Coles, and he's going to get wrestled down after picking up a gain of five. Nearing the end of the first quarter, he's going to throw this one into the flat, and Coles gets taken down in the backfield. Oliver looking to throw now on third down, moving around in the pocket, firing that one over the middle for Thomas Barnes, coming up clutch on third down, and that's going to take us to the second quarter. Pass over the middle, nearly picked off by Jimmy Kent. Dropped it a few times, kind of bobbled it around. It falls incomplete. Now pass to the left side is going to be sailing out of bounds. Third down, Oliver firing that one to the right side. And that one's going to be broken up. Heard with another pass breakup. Fourth and ten, and the offense remains on the field. Throwing this one to the left side, and Coles brings it in. Despite the heavy pressure and big hit on Oliver. Now he's going to lose the football, and Thomas is there for the recovery. So they may have converted on fourth down, but just a play later. Thomas forcing the fumble and recovering it. Handoff is going to go to Boyd. Now, obviously, he has that big punt return, and he gets a solid run. Tack on the five-yard face mask. Handoff is going to go to Cron, and now he takes it right up the middle, and he's stripped to the football. It's on the ground, and the Golden Flashes recover it. We force a fumble and get it, but then pretty much give it right back to him via another fumble, and they have some pretty solid field position to open up this next drive. Although I guess it does kind of push them back from where they were on their previous drive, but I'm sure they'll take that all day, every day. Thomas Bennett with the sliding catch there, picking up a gain of 12. Now play action, and this one is going to sail out of bounds. Thomas Bennett making a nice catch, but obviously it's not going to count. Handoff goes to Coles. He takes this one to the right side, running past defenders. Garrett can't get to him, and that's going to be a touchdown for the Golden Flashes, knotting the game up at 7 apiece. 
Montana State back out here on offense. Handoff is going to go to Ryan Carter. Trucking a couple of defenders. Running through everybody. Fighting for every yard to get that first down. Fuller dropping back to the throw. Firing this one over the middle. It's going to be caught by Black. Black's to the races. And he is gone. Touchdown Montana State. But wait a minute, there's a flag on the field holding on Adam Weaver, the right guard. So instead of a touchdown, it's first and 20. Fuller rolling to his right. He's going to pick it up on the scramble, and he gets the first down. But obviously, we would much rather have that touchdown. Handoff goes to Carter. He goes up the gut, picking up a pretty solid gain. Just a yard away from 600 rushing yards on the season. Cronin now taking this one to the right side, weaving his way through some traffic and holding on to that football. Fuller dropping back to throw, and it's going to fall incomplete. Kevin Fuller still yet to complete a pass today. Firing this one to the left side, and it's going to be broken up. He's kind of lucky that wasn't picked off. Now on third down, Fuller's under some pressure, throwing off his back foot downfield. And once again, lucky not to be picked off. Fourth and ten, and the offense remains on the field. They have a fourth down conversion today, but Montana State doesn't as they send the heat. Fuller still yet to complete a pass, and that's going to be a turnover on downs. Sean Young in the flat. He has the reception and gets just across midfield. Now they're going to go with a direct snap, and the football is going to be ripped off on the ground, picked up by Ross. What a forced fumble there. That happened so fast. Montana State with another forced fumble going their way. And once again, we've got some pretty good field position starting this one off at midfield. Fuller looking to complete his first pass of the game, and that's going to be tough if you're throwing it out of bounds. Second and 10, tight end goes in motion, and Carter gets gobbled up in the backfield for a loss of two. Now on third down, Fuller looking for that completion. Moving to his left, he's going to fire this one back across the field, testing the one-on-one -on -one coverage for Will Black, and he's got it inside of the seven. I don't know how that's going to be your first completion of the game, but it was an impressive one at that, dropping a dime to Black. That's going to make it goal to go from the seven. Handoff goes to Carter up the middle. He's going to pick up two. Clock continues to run. Handoff goes to Boyd, and he's going to pick up two or three more. Third down and goal. We're going to hand it off to Cronin, and he's going to be denied. And Montana State's going to call a timeout. So now it's decision time. Do we go for it or kick the field goal? Coach Cho just brings out Gabriel Fields for the field goal. It's going to be a three-point game at halftime. The Bobcats will have the football to open up the second half of play. Fuller under some pressure, firing this one over the middle, floating that one up for Marcus Lumpkin, who can't come down with it. On third down, Fuller's going to step up into the pocket. He's got Will Black. He's able to hold on to it. Fuller, two for nine passing, but 66 yards. Fuller looking to throw again, going to the right side, tipped and picked off by Moore. Reed on the tackle, and that's two turnovers now for Montana State, two each now for each team, and once again, Kent State has some great field position. Oliver in the shotgun, he's looking to throw, and he's going to go down, sacked on the play, plus they were cheating as they get holding. It's going to be declined, and we're going to give our guy the sack. Maurice Oliver now throwing over the middle. It's going to be caught. Oliver with a much better completion percentage today as he's 10 for 15. That pass is going to fall incomplete. Bring up fourth down, and they're going to be punting the football. Here's a toss play to the left for Boyd, and that's not going anywhere as he loses three yards. Second and 13, Fuller dropping back to throw, and down he goes, smacked in the backfield. Third down and long now, Montana State on their own six-yard line, and it's going to be real tough to convert when Kevin Fuller keeps throwing those passes out of bounds. Once again, superb field position here for the Golden Flashes. Catch is going to be made in the flat by Coles, and that's going to pick up a first down. Play action. Oliver has all day stepping up into the pocket, and once again, his pass is going to be broken up. We only have one sack of the, on the game, but we do have 10 hurries. Pass to the left side is going to be broken up there. Great job by Robert Alexander, who's back in the game, to break that one up. Now on third down, this one's going to go all the way to the end zone. That's going to be a touchdown for Thomas Bennett. The Bobcats sent the heat. Alexander came in unblocked, but that doesn't stop Oliver from dropping dimes into the end zone and the receiver burning Kevin Ortz. Here's Fuller firing this one to the right side, and once again, a pass that goes out of bounds, leading Murphy to the sideline and just a little too far. 
Now Ryan Carter going to fight his way up the gut there as uh, that defense is going to have a pretty tough time tackling him on that play. And there's also an injured defender. First down and 10 at the 31-yard line. Carter makes a man miss. Give him 10 more yards right there. The passing game has really been struggling so far today. And so if we can really establish a run, that'd be great. We are looking to throw on this play, though. Pass is going to be tipped into the hands of Turner. That was a terrible throw that was high and behind him, but luckily the defender just gave him a second chance at it. Now going for six and overthrown. Looking for Will Black. Kevin Fuller's really been struggling today. Dropping back to throw, rolling out to his right, throwing on the move, and that's actually maybe the first pass of the game you can say wasn't Fuller's fault that it fell incomplete. A bad drop there by Will Black. Fuller's going to stop and pop over the middle there for Marcus Lumpkin. Big time catch is going to get us inside of the red zone. Just a quarter of football left to go. Montana State looking to take the lead here for Black. And he can't stay in bounds. Once again, Fuller leading his guys out of bounds. Pass over the middle is going to be broken up. There were a couple of defenders there ready. And we're kind of lucky that one just fell incomplete. Bring out fields for another field goal attempt. It is up and good, making it just a one-point game. So now they're going to take over from the 21-yard line. Pass over the middle is going to be caught by Bennett. Bennett down at the 50-yard line as they continue to just move this ball very quickly down this Bobcat defense. Now that's three consecutive completions once again for Oliver. Run to the left side by Coles is going to be pretty solid as he picks up a gain of six. Now Oliver driving back to the throw, floating this one to the end zone, but this time nobody there, a miscommunication on offense. Going for it on third down, obviously they, they're two for six on third down today. They're looking to go to the end zone, and that's going to be caught for a Golden Flashes touchdown. How in the world do you give that up? Double man coverage, and Oliver just says, screw it, I'm going for six. Gets it right in between the defenders. I don't understand how they make that play. So now Kevin Fuller needs to lead us downfield and get us a touchdown plus a two-point conversion. Does Montana State take this really aggressively with two minutes left to go in the game and try to get in the end zone as soon as possible? Or do they kind of milk the clock as they work their way downfield? It looks like they're going to be taking the ladder as they run the football on back-to-back -back plays, picking up a first down on that one. That's going to get us into Kent State territory. Now off the play, fake down goes Fuller. You can't be taking sacks when you're trying to put together a two-minute drill. Floating this one to the right side. There's two defenders there, and it's going to be caught by Turner. Holy mackerel. What a catch to get Montana State down to the 11-yard line. That is deserving of a second look. Take a look at this. There's two defenders on him. He throws it past both of him, and that's the catch of the year right there for Montana State. But will it really matter? We've got to get into the end zone for his, count, his catch to really count for this Bobcat drive. Run to the left side by Cronin's not going anywhere. The clock continues to tick. Seven seconds left on the clock. Montana State refusing to call a timeout. Fuller rolling to his right. He takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Montana State, but we're not done yet. We need to go for two. Otherwise, that drive was all for naught. Looking to go for it. They're not going to let Fuller run for it this time. So he's going to throw for it. Ross Lewis in the back of the end zone. Fuller drop in dimes there. And it looks like we're headed to overtime. But remember, two games ago against Sacramento State, that's what it looked like too before they got a kick return touchdown. So all we have to do is make sure that doesn't happen. And it won't. Ladies and gentlemen, we are headed to overtime. Montana State, as the technical visiting team, gets to choose. They go with tails. It doesn't fail as they win the toss, and they're going to choose to go on offense. So here we are at the 25-yard line. It's been a minute since we've had an overtime game. Cronin going up the middle, and he's going to pick up just a couple of yards. Second down, Fuller rolling to his right, and he's going to run it and brought down a couple yards shy of the sticks. Third down and three, Fuller dropping back to throw, rolling to his right, taking off and running yet again, diving out of bounds inside of the 10. Down at the seven yard line, Fuller dropping back to throw, firing to the end zone. A dangerous pass falls incomplete. That was pretty close. Second down and goal. Now Fuller's looking to run for it. He's got an open running lane and the Bobcat touchdown. So that's going to mean that Kent State has to get the touchdown to match. Otherwise, Montana State might just walk away with a bowl victory. Oliver looking to pass, throwing this one into the flat. Caught by Coles, but his momentum takes him out of bounds. 
Second down and seven off of the play fake to Coles Oliver's pass is gonna fall incomplete, but there's a flag on the play. They're gonna call pass interference on Kevin Ortz. That's gonna take him down to the seven yard line. And looking at the replay, I don't see any pass interference there. That's bullcrap. Nonetheless, that's gonna get him down to the seven. Pass is gonna be intercepted. Brett Garrett in the back of the end zone. Montana State is gonna take it. Wow, Brett Garrett coming up clutch let's take a look at that replay actually it won't show us the replay but wow that was an incredible play by Brett Garrett in the back of the end zone to secure the victory Kevin Fuller despite his poor play we it feels like we won that in spite of him although he did score our only two offensive touchdowns which came at the end of regulation and obviously in overtime Wow, what a game, what a way to end this season in our sixth MPC Computers Bowl. As previously stated, Kevin Fuller did not have a good game. 5 of 21 for 151 yards, no touchdowns, one pick, 23% completion percentage. That is awful. But he did have 54 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. So, I mean, that's the big reason that we won this game was those two late rushing touchdowns by the quarterback. Offensive line, they played solid, although the center did give up two sacks. Looking at the defense, they had their ups and downs in this game. Cole Hurd came away with just the only sack of the game. And then obviously Brett Garrett with the high of the game, getting the game ceiling interception in overtime. Gabriel Fields, perfect on the day. Idaho also had a bowl game, and they were also victorious as they beat UAB in the Hawaii Bowl, the only other bowl game we've gone to in this series, and Northern Arizona is going to get beat down by Kansas State 42-24. to That's going to be a wrap for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it, leave a like is always appreciated, and until next time, this has been Jeffrey reminding you to stay moist.